So I thought I'd make another Astro related video to bore myself because let's face it Nobody else watches these videos and if you have accidentally stumbled across this then well prepare to be bored for the next seven or eight minutes so i purchased an altair saber version 2 out azimuth mount which apparently has a payload of up to 20 kilograms i won't be putting anywhere near that on it and it's also designed to fit a skywatcher eq5 tripod or in my case i have a eq5 tripod pier which i'm currently setting up uh, this has the advantage actually of giving you a little bit more clearance around the uh, tripod legs so the advantage of having a pier is if I'm swinging the tripod um, directly above or at the zenith anywhere then there's less chance of it clashing with one of the, the tripod legs which is quite convenient so uh, here it is it's the version 2 it has uh, 30 millimeter upgrade Japanese bearings it's designed to fit a Skywatcher tripod or a Vixen or Burlback tripod or a Vixen level style tripod with an M10 um, thread style. It has a M10 threaded hole in the base of the mount. It weighs 3.2 kilograms and apparently has a payload of 20 kilograms each side because another dovetail clamp can be mounted on the opposite end of the bar so just to note the actual counterweight bar and the Altair Vixen style clamp the other end of the bar there you see they are optional extras so you purchase the mount on its own and it will not have a clamp and it will not have a counterweight bar uh, there is a lot of holes though at the end of each bar, threaded holes, different um, thread sizes. I think there's four M8 and six M6 holes for mounting saddles and clamps. So here is a dovetail declination bar from a Skywatcher Star Adventure Pro that I have um, milled the, the dovetail section off to give me a plate that I can drill and screw on to the Altair Saber mount itself where potentially another clamp would go if you were connecting another telescope tube. So the advantage of this is uh, you can buy the the bar and the counterweight separately and I had this left over from another mod modification that I did on an ioptron so um, I, I briefly milled it down and um, drew some drew some holes in it so the counterweight I'm currently using is actually from my ioptron go-to mount uh, so it won't be a permanent fixture so I purchased a really cheap weight from eBay and uh, proceeded in using acetone to lift the the very badly stenciled paint job and I'll probably uh, I'll give it a rub down and I'll give it a clean up and, um, and I'll probably spray paint it silver something to match the mount So as you can see, is upon mounting the, the telescope tube, you can see it's uh, quite a bit front heavy, uh, which is not a problem because I haven't put a diagonal in or an eyepiece yet, so it should kind of balance itself out. The telescope I'm actually using is a TS Optics photo line 110, and it's an F7 ED doublet. As you can see now, I can actually screw uh, an additional counterweight bar into the mount, which will act as a 
balance as you can see immediately the balance just shifted from one end to the other So obviously the idea with having a weight on the altitude axis is to counter any changes that I make during the observing session such as changing an eyepiece or racking the focus in or out to save me having to slide the actual telescope tube up and down in the Vixen dovetail I can simply slide a small weight up and down a bar which will compensate for any eyepieces or accessories that I intend to add that will affect the altitude axis. And as you can see just simply unscrewing the aluminium heavy duty dust cap from the front is enough to throw the balance out. So finally with the addition of a very small Iopron counterweight I was able to balance the scope very nicely in the azimuth and very nicely in the altitude and it's very easy to move around. I think if you're using anything over a few kilos I think you need to counterweight that to get the bearing to really kind of operate smoothly.